uh, do a screen share, and I'm just going to start to lecture a bit on chapter three. I'm just going to jump right in right now, um, and then uh, it'll be available for other people too, but instead of waiting, so I think that's what we'll do today. So if you want to take notes, you're welcome to, um, and then like I said, I'm already recording this, so I'll post it later for us as well. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, and let's see how it works. Hopefully it works good. Um, are you seeing right now the uh, chapter three PowerPoint on the screen? Great, okay, cool. Um, well, we're gonna talk about waste. Uh, I'll lecture for a little bit and then um, I'll answer any questions we have and then uh, that'll be it for today. Uh, but we'll go for a little bit longer. Ah, garbage cow. <laughs> Some of you might actually recognize Garbage Cow if you've done some traveling in the world, um, particularly in other countries um, where this is a common site with waste uh, in you know, urban areas uh, and even in rural areas. So the question is, uh, do you waste? And I did just open that up um, and a majority of the people said yes, uh, like about two to one, and then uh, the remainder of those folks, and you still have time to finish and answer that today for Top Hat, but the remainder of those folks said not much, and not one person said no. Okay, so before we do that, let me uh, stop that screen share, and then I'm gonna do another one here, and let's look at, right, we look at Top Hat once. And let me find it really quick. Close out of that. Sorry, it's going to take just a second. Trying to see it. And well, I will. Let me put that back up. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. It's not working quite as good as I want it to. Let's share that. All right. Um, hopefully now you're mostly seeing the top hat thing anyway. Is that right? Can you see top hat at all? Yeah, okay. So do you waste? Yes, um, for most people. Um, and if this is over the top of that, uh, let me shrink this out of the way a little bit. Uh, 34 and then to 13. And then what do you waste the most all right so here's our list food 10 people eight people water yep uh electricity plastic uh packaging packaging is a big one that's been coming up over the last couple uh semesters bags containers cups silverware leftover food um food water plastic products energy food or single-use plastic food and water plastic from packaging food and it's casing trash what do you waste trash well played well played <laughs> uh, <laughs> um limes all right there you go uh packaging from snap limes <laughs> plastic i try and avoid it but it is in everything yeah it it is absolutely in everything um let's look back here at uh do you recycle or garbage more we mostly have people that are garbaging more, but let me share this uh, as we get back to the PowerPoint. Um, all right, so we all know that we waste. So I guess the question to you is, first of all, I had, you know, what do you waste and why? And what we've got here is what challenges do you face? But let's first, why did you say that you waste what you put on your list? Like, why do you waste, uh, energy or how do you waste energy? Um, why do you waste time or how do you waste like, you know, why? Could you avoid it? What do you think? For me, I said that I wasted electricity and I feel like that's because we have a lot of um, devices that we continue to keep the chargers plugged in all the time and we don't really think about it even when we're not using it. Right. Um, so I feel like that's a really good example of how we just don't even think about it, but it's actually wasting a lot of our electricity. Yeah, and of course, even if, we, if we've got a lot of stuff plugged in that we don't use overnight to a power strip, 
you unplug that or shut that power strip off, you could save quite a bit of electricity. Does anybody, has anybody in the history of the world ever done that? <laughs> I think, I think maybe a few people, but if we're going to be honest, um, gosh, I haven't, I haven't thought about that forever. Maybe power saving mode. Um, but as far as my computer, I think my Apple's on basically all the time, even if it's in sleep mode, which does save energy, TV and things like that. Nowadays things, you know, have to completely reboot, I think. So that's another reason maybe people are less, um, you know, willing to do that. But what else are you wasting and why? And that also goes with what challenges do you face, right? Because that's part of the why. What do you think? I said packaging. And for me, that was just the first thing that came to mind, especially because um, for a lot of products that aren't like the packaging, it's like if you get a candy bar, you can't like reuse that for anything. There's no other real option but to throw it away. Right. Um, and for a lot of products, there aren't like packaging less alternatives. Like a lot right. of food, they're not just going to have it out, I guess. So there's just a lot of yeah, and, and certainly I, I don't think we've been thinking about that for too long, even though, even though people have thought about it for a while. I mean, bulk is oftentimes not available, and I know that now bulk probably faces all sorts of challenges. I actually know somebody that used to go around to health stores up until uh, a few months ago for COVID and replace the bulk, but now that is almost entirely disappearing in places, so uh, even more challenges to packaging now that that's, you know, maybe not as safe as an idea as it used to be. But yeah, um, and so things are in boxes and then in plastic bags inside the boxes. Um, so multiple, multiple packages for, for maybe one item even, um, especially if you're talking about a piece of technology that has foam and wrapping and uh, what was it that we got? We got a heater recently um, and that was, you know, four pieces of styrofoam that can't be recycled and two plastic bags over top of it and all sorts of little twisty ties and stuff. Good. Um, what else do you waste and why? And a lot of these things you might be able to waste less of, but, but what else are you wasting and, and why? What are some of those challenges? I think we all waste a lot of water and the sun that is inevitable. Like when we're brushing our teeth, um, I think we all know like you, know, you waste less water when you're brushing your teeth, you turn the faucet off. Um, and like when you're taking a shower, like some of that water is wasted, no matter how fast of a shower you take, but you have to take a shower, so. <laughs> yeah, and we've talked, right, already in this class about the potential dangers of asking people to sacrifice too much, particularly in this culture, right? Um, you know, where some people don't have anything to sacrifice and you know, to be honest, people don't want to have to take a shorter shower. It's funny because um, I always used to run the water while I was brushing my teeth. And just the not being able to do that is annoying to me at times, even though I know it's the right thing. So, yeah. Um, anybody else? What else are we wasting a lot of? What about, what about food? I think somebody has their mic on if you would mute yourself, please. What about food? Are, are you having a lot of food waste? And, and why, why so much food waste? I think there's- I think for me, the, like, the amount of food waste that I have is like greatly increased since coming to school. And I think that's mostly just because the dorm proportions this year are all like pre-made. And so they do a lot of stuff heavy on stuff I would go lighter on. And so I'm ending up wasting a lot of the dorm food. Oh, so, so no, at the dorms, no buffet style anymore. All pre, oh, interesting. Okay. Right. So a lot, maybe a lot bigger of a portion than you would take. And, and of course that's, I, that's pretty cultural, right? I mean, you know, the super and the extra size and the super duper size and the, I don't know. All right. Why, why else? How about why else for food waste? That's interesting. I wonder if, is your food waste, are you able to, you're not able to eat there anymore, are you? Or are you? Um, now that it's getting colder, they're starting to open up inside, but there's only like five to 10 tables. So question, do you think there's more food waste now? Because instead of taking your tray over and then they have that compost program, do, like, is it winding up 
in your dorm are they doing composting or are they composting less? What do you think? Um, I don't really see any signs of composting. There's just like big trash cans outside and they always like give you a lot of like plastic waste and like lots of packaging for all the food. So that's a bit much. And yeah, it's, it's not a great system they have set up for reducing food waste. Right, wow. Because I know that once they started composting, they're doing so well with that. The colleges, and I just started to think today, there's a guy who's in charge of that, who's uh, fantastic, and I'm going to see if, I think it's, maybe his name is Jeff, but I'm going to look, maybe, um, I hadn't thought before about being able to do like a, a guest in our class or a special guest that could lecture the class or talk about it, but this guy does is in charge of the composting program, and as long as he can join our Zoom meeting, um, I think I could have him talk to the class, maybe see if he could meet with us, uh, just to see exactly what they're doing on campus, because it's pretty huge. But now it makes me think, see, they used to have to go outside of campus for all their composting needs. Now that everything is, you know, in-house, it saves a lot of money, it saves a lot of fuel. But I'm wondering if with the dorms being closed and, and with people taking food all to different locations, if, if they're even composting like half as much now, that would be really, really interesting to find out. Um, I never really thought about that. Though. Good, good. Uh, any other challenges that you face as far as waste disposal? Like, does anybody here have apartments that just don't have recycling available to them or, or you know, it's so far out that people just don't recycle or what do you think? Or the dorms, same thing. Or maybe your job doesn't recycle. I uh, used to work at a movie theater and uh, when uh, like we would like throw away trash, like we didn't recycle at all. So we would have like, like trash cans and trash cans and trash. And it was just, it, that was terrible. And like lots of like packaging, obviously. Right. As far as that goes, cause we were like distributing like so much. It was just, it was constant amount of trash and basically no recycling. Uh, yeah, I never thought about that before, but I guess I haven't seen a recycling thing inside a movie theater. Um, you know, yeah, right. Oh, I can only imagine, holy cow. Um, okay, good, good. Anybody else? Uh, job or where you live? provide some challenges like they don't they don't pay for it or it's not accessible or what do you think i know my best friend's work and her apartment complex both don't have recycling because they say that they have two they have two giant landfill things to get rid of garbage and they don't want to get rid of one of those to make space for a recycling bin so they just didn't put recycling at all <laughs> so, right yeah. all right um, I used to live in St. Louis and there we'd have our recycling picked up every week with the trash and now since living here we only get it picked up like every other week and so it's harder for us to recycle because we just have so much stuff. Right and is it a house that you're at? I'm at a rental right now. It is a house but it's a rental so that's the deal that we're on. Yeah we're on every other as well but they allow us to put out as much recycling as we can. Are you limited to your amount or is it just the uh, pickup isn't as often we just have a single bin but um i just don't know where to we could put it out like the boxes and stuff i guess but we'd have to have different bins and then i guess i don't know if they would pick it up from a separate bin you know yeah it's interesting how um different it is at every place right you know mm -hmm. like like not a uniform thing so it makes it even more difficult and i mean okay so on campus and you can answer this uh really if you smoke or if you don't smoke but on campus where do you think the most cigarette butts are on campus? It's really, it's, to me, it's really interesting because they used to have the, you know, the little receptacles, the ashtrays or the whatever to throw the butts away. So where on campus do you think the most uh, butts are that are not in some kind of receptacle? Like in general or just where they end up? Like on the ground or are you saying in a specific place? In a specific place. Yes, on the ground, but in a specific place. Kind of a trick question almost it's the weirdest thing i'm not be, sure outside the dining halls um yeah it, it actually so because it, it's kind of a trick question I'll, I'll i'll sort of answer it so the most cigarette butts that i see always on campus because we do we used to do a campus cleanup every semester with my classes would be right next to the thing that you're supposed to throw your cigarette butts into <laughs> like it was six inches too far so I'm sorry, done, not gonna make it. And so I always thought that those were a really good metaphor for just how accessible you have to make like 
recycling of all different kinds and how easy it is because I mean, how many people here, just a show of hands, aren't always sure what you can recycle or what numbers of recycling are acceptable, right? Yeah, okay, okay. So those are, again, you know, we want as much to be accessible and recyclable as possible. However, those numbers, and I think the numbers just in the last year for garbage collection in this town changed again. Um, so I think that we would find that uh, both in the Larimer County landfill and in, in other landfills, uh, in this country, a great deal of what is supposed to be recycled is just being thrown away. Um, you know, lack of separation, um, lack of folks to be able to put in those hours to be able to do that. And if people don't do it on the front end, a lot of that winds up in the garbage. I mean, a pizza box that's been used before that has food in it is not, you know, going to get recycled, even though it's recyclable. So anyway, good. Um, and I think really the point here is, if we're looking at solution-based thinking, which we are this semester, that's how do we take those barriers out of the way? Um, I know that when Julie worked at, um, uh, I think she worked at Olive Garden for a bit, and they had no recycling, like none, not even the cardboard, and everything came in cardboard boxes, and even that, and I think that's still the case, would wind up right in the back, um, just going straight in the dumpster. And of course, the company that owns that also owns three or four or five other companies. So, you know, how do we make it easy? Like what kind of systemic changes can we make, institutionalized changes to make those barriers less for folks? So good, all right. All right, so can't garbage just disappear? Can everybody still see that screen share? I just wanna make sure of the slides. Okay, great. Um, and you know what, really one of the problems with waste in our society and just globally is that if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So, you know, where do we put these waste facilities? They're most oftentimes in rural communities. They're most oftentimes in communities of color. Uh, they are literally on the other side of tracks. That's where we see a lot of the waste, um, even like waste and sewage treatment plants classically um, in communities of color and in impoverished communities. And then out in the middle of nowhere, um, we do the same thing with our prisons. And so it's hard for us to get a track on what we're doing with waste. What is our responsibility? How much is it? Is it being um, you know, taken care of responsibly if we don't know that it's a problem? Um, has anybody ever been, so this is a picture of what they used to do at the turn of the century, you know, just straight up in New York City and other places, dump it. Um, like they're dumping it into the waterway here, right off of a bridge and in a lot of places, um, you know, still in the outskirts, close to town, things like that. But um, has anybody ever lived in a big, big city? I'm thinking like New York City during like trash collection day. Has anybody, anybody lived in a big city that could describe it or been there for that? I've lived in Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, and basically, you see the trash like take over the street. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it is disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and so I've got kind of a picture down here, bottom right. That's like you know, I mean, if you haven't experienced garbage day, yeah, in Philadelphia, in Chicago, in New York City, I mean. Imagine if trash collection didn't happen for a day or two days or three days, right? And that just really speaks to the volume of waste that we create. That's why it's a problem because there are so many people wasting so much. And, and you know, the thought is we thought we think we could just kind of garbage, garbage, garbage. It's not an individual problem right here. It's a global problem. And unfortunately, it just doesn't go away. You can bury it again. And I know that the Larimer County landfill, um, and, and we'll look at that, you know, exactly sort of how numbers have gone up. But they're almost at capacity or have been over capacity looking for a new place. Um, so it's not just a problem of, of management, right? It requires multiple entry points uh, for us to be able to investigate if we're going to do something about it. Oops, back here. All right, so good terms here for the exam, of course. Uh, MSW, that's going to be on the next exam for sure. Municipal solid waste. 
um, all waste that originating from homes, industries, businesses, demolition, um, land clearing, construction. <clears throat> I mean, when we think about it, obviously one of the big ones, product packaging, um, grass clippings, furniture, clothing, food waste. And uh, as we're sort of gonna experience here um, with the movie Dive, tremendous amounts of food waste. It, it, it is a big deal. And again, I said it requires multiple entry points. The big deal about food waste is that there are a lot of places in the world that have figured out a way, and we used to do this, but in, in Europe they do certainly too, and we used to here, but we don't, but figured out a way to use that. Uh, so that it just doesn't get covered up, right? Generating um, more methane, things like that. So where you feed it to farm animals or you find a use for it. Um, and so for a very micro ways on our farm, I don't think we've had food waste for the last 12 years. Like we just don't throw food in the garbage. I think the only thing we throw in the garbage would be banana peels and onions. Cause those I think so far are the only things that the chickens won't eat. I mean, if a chicken dies, you have to get that chicken out of there because they're like little velociraptors. They're not like dinosaurs. They are basically dinosaurs and they'll eat anything, just like little piranhas, little velociraptors. So any of our food waste immediately goes to our chickens. Um, and because we eat really clean, then we feel comfortable doing that. Most people wouldn't even, you know, question that. Just take the but if it's good enough for people, then give it to farm animals. So that includes food waste as well. Newspapers, batteries. Um, batteries, obviously a big, big, they haven't made batteries any less toxic. Um, and, and so they're one of the biggies. Uh, I'll talk about that later uh, in this chapter, I believe. Um, hazardous waste, sludge, non-hazardous industrial wastes. And, and here's the deal. Uh, when it's statistically significant, I think we should talk about it. This is a good term, not only for a test, but just for us to know, look at this global production of municipal solid waste has increased 250% in a time span of like 40 years. Now that is important, right? Because we need to learn. I, I've got like, do you recycle more or do you garbage more? And obviously the globe is garbaging more, much to the detriment of poor communities, much to the detriment of poor countries. And not every country is willing just to take our waste anymore. Um, you know, a lot of countries have stopped doing that. And then there are a lot of countries turning waste into energy in clean ways. Um, but we've got to, you know, find some kind of middle ground for this because obviously that increase is tremendous. So it hasn't gotten any better in the last 10 years uh, as well since 2009 or 11 years. What does that look like prior to recycling? Paper and paperboard, huge waste. Um, and, and of course, recycling, and that's important that we'll talk about recycling isn't always the better option, depending on the chemical process of your recycling and where you've shipped that job off to um, and that process and whether those places have environmental laws that are lax or that are being enforced. So food waste, plastics, then textiles, metal, wood, glass, um, you know, comprising quite a bit of the rest of it. Okay. Um, so here, you know, how waste is managed in the European Union. Um, and of course it uh, differs very uh, tremendously or it varies tremendously with some countries landfilling almost all of their waste while others, Germany landfill practically nothing. Um, and Germany continues to be a country, um, you know, that's really knocking it out of the park in all sorts of ways uh, to use a baseball analogy, but I'm not really even a fan of baseball. So I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> all right, let's check this out. Make some observations. Uh, this is how much is being landfilled. Then you can see how much is being recycled or composted. Um, you can see places that are incinerating it. And any, any kind of observations, just sociological observations here. Take a look at it for a second, and then if anybody has, has any thoughts. Um, I noticed that the more that it's not landfilled, the more it's incinerated. Yes, yep. So you've got places down there that are uh, landfilling very little, um, recycling and composting quite a bit. Um, those are together, I guess I should make sure that we know that, and then um, incinerating, right. And uh, it's interesting, we could look at that. I'm sure I have a link in here somewhere, but there are all sorts of ways that they're burning garbage now that's leading to clean energy without the byproduct of incinerating. But of course, some of these places 
um, and most of them at this point still not using that technology, so burning quite a bit of it. Um, yeah, anybody recognizing anything else in here that looks interesting sociologically or just statistically as we look at this? I would say Germany's interesting, they, considering they send nothing to landfills. I don't know if that's 100% true, but. Um, uh, it's, yeah, I would say, I would say it's true. Um, you know, of course, there's a lot of reasons for some of this and some of it is space. I think though, if we're looking at Belgium, Denmark, Sweden, Austria, Netherlands, and Germany, very, um, you know, uh, we, we're talking about all sorts of social programs, high um, socioeconomic, uh, you know, a good social infrastructure in these companies, or excuse me, in these countries. Also, they're small. So, you know, whereas in the United States, garbage, I think we approach waste as like, we don't really have to think about it because in ways we don't, um, you know, geographically we have a lot of space. So it's interesting to see um, a lot of times we talk about Europe being ahead in so many ways, but one of the ways that they've done that is because they've had to, right? And when you absolutely have to because of space or other restrictions, or maybe that's resources that you don't have or whatever it might be, um, yeah, you start to have to get creative. A lot like with what I was talking about with Cuba um, and uh, urban agriculture, organic urban agriculture. All right, so um, we are uh, close to home here if you're in Colorado when we talk about nuclear waste. Um, nuclear power plants generate approximately 20 metric tons of used nuclear fuel every year, globally 8,800 tons. Personally, anyway, disappointed to see that um, nuclear power is still um, uh, on the platform um, as far as the approach that we want to take. Uh, we do have, uh, obviously, a global crisis right now from Fukushima on a massive scale still. Here's a satellite picture down below early on. Um, that'd be like radiation that's spreading throughout the ocean. Uh, once enough time passed, and it wasn't too much time within a year, we were finding most of or many of the tuna that were on our shores, um, you know, having to deal with that uh, nuclear waste as well. And it's really radiation because they're trying to keep the rods from melting down. So there's been some containment that's been successful. There's been all sorts of ideas from people like Paul Stamets, who we've talked about here before, the mushroom guy, um, looking at mycelial solutions. But right now, and still, in a lot of ways, they're pumping water. Um, uh, to cool it down and then that water is going back immediately into the ocean. So um, a lot of folks feel that international intervention is needed. Um, so what is the possibility, and I ask these questions, but we'll look at it next time, of global action, uh, global military intervention, what would that look like? What about political intervention? Can we stop that sort of disaster um, uh, from continuing in the way that we know it is? Um, and what can we do about it and how should we go about it? Um, all right, but we'll back that off uh, for a little bit um, and I'll stop there for today. Uh, what I did wanna say though was uh, it's close to home because what is uh, uh, related to nuclear waste? Why would it be close to home for us in Colorado? Who knows? Uh, so this isn't something that's such a far away thing to talk about. It's actually something that's you know, very much uh, something that's of concern to folks in Colorado. They store it like in old mines in Colorado or something like that. They do. And what's the name of it? Yeah. No, no clue. Yeah, does anybody know the name of it? Is it maybe the Rocky Mountain Arsenal? Close. Rocky. It's the Rocky Mountain Flats, right? Yes. There we yeah. go. Ding, ding, ding. Um, great. Um, Yep, and of course, they have had containment issues. They have had leaks there several times in the past. And as we know, the problem with that, uh, with nuclear waste is that um, it's not only hard to contain so that it doesn't leak out because you're trying to bury it, you know, literally miles in some cases, or at least almost uh, deep into the mountains. The containers um, are known to rupture and the actual material itself um, won't lose that radioactivity till far beyond um, all of our lifetimes. So, you know, when we're looking at this energy, and that's not to say, look, it, solar energy is not yet a very clean energy. Um, but we have to look at, you know, and weigh all the externalities, right? One of those big externalities is wind power and solar power have so many advantages because when the sun stops shining, then we don't have to worry about anything else. <laughs> like when that's done, we're all done anyway. 
So you can rely on it and you can rely on wind. That's, you know, our very atmosphere. So those are important things. Now, um, not as clean as they could be. People are working about that uh, towards that, but, but nothing as far as the externalities and the danger to our environment in regards to nuclear waste, which obviously at over, and that is a bit old by now. So certainly we're looking at nine or 10,000 tons annually. That's a lot to have to try and imagine that we could contain. Um, so the problem is uh, close by anyway, and this is a very easy summation of it is, it's buried in the mountains. When it leaks, it can get into mountain streams and river sources, water sources, as well as underground and make its ways into communities. Everything is downstream here on the front range from anything that's up in the mountains, right? I mean, basically that's what we're talking about. Okay, good. Um, are there any questions about anything sort of outside the chapter? I will post this. Matter of fact, I, I'd love to do more, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, more live lectures. Yeah, I mean, I, I really do. I, I record, pre-recorded a ton of my stuff from my other classes. Then I started to do a couple for this class and I'm like, I don't know, I'd probably like to, you know, be able to incorporate that just as much as record it from home. That would break it up for me too, which is much needed. Um, so yeah, any, any, any questions about where we're headed? We're, we're working with the chapter on waste. I'll wrap up and I'll lecture about that. Let's either the weekend, not live, so that we can get into chapter four, or I'll save it for Tuesday and we'll do it live. Um, we'll look at some more questions. The questions are still open on Top Hat until tonight. Always check the folders for now until I rename the dates, um, just to make sure that you're not missing it. Also, this being said, if you still get Top Hat, you can still get, because it's worth percentage points at the end. So even if you chime in like 70% of the time, you might get a couple percentage points. If you've got an 88, maybe that's a 90. Um, for people that haven't and worried that you miss questions, don't look at the grade book inside Top Hat. I'll have them amend that. Mostly folks who use it and use it throughout the semester, we give full points to. So don't make it a point of stress, more so a point of have fun answering the questions so that we can, you know, then get those talked about and you can earn some points on the side. So if you do have any needs, um, again, you know, we've got our consultant and I can always pass that on to him. But for the most part, um, yeah, I just want it to be another tool for us to have a more enjoyable distance sort of thing. Um, anybody here have any questions? Oh, uh, register to vote the day, you know, National Voter Registration Day was the other day. I'm, I'm just going to continue to say this because I think that um, folks need to represent, raise a hands if you are registered to vote. Honest raising of hands. Good. That's a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, again, because this is sociology, we talk about collective action. If you want to make a difference, if you want your voice and the people who are in your generation, I'm not my generation, I'm Gen X. And I think it's the, maybe the first time, because before then it was like baby boomers and other stuff. Gen X was the first time they just hammered us with one letter to let us know they didn't want us to skateboard all over their stuff. Ha <laughs> ha, they failed. Anyway, then we went on to millennials and then we went back to the alphabet and X and Y and whatever. I usually think that they use your generation, meaning other people, the media, with like a tone of disdain or something or disrespect, but you're my peeps. I don't, uh, my colleagues, a lot of my colleagues are like 70 and a lot of my, I don't even see any of my colleagues anymore. So since you're my folks, I'm gonna tell you that your age group needs to be heard, okay? So whatever that is and whatever you want to get accomplished, if you're, if you're not on top of it to vote and you're not flexing, you know, your democratic guns, you know, like these huge guns here that I just showed you, um, then you're not getting it done. And we live in a democracy. That's what I mean by democratic guns, okay? We live in a democracy. If you don't vote, uh, then you really, I know, and people do say that if you don't vote, you can't complain. Ah, we're all gonna complain, we're humans, this is sociology. That being said, uh, at least make sure that you do your part, okay? Uh, and in the immortal words over there of, uh, uh, is it, uh, gosh, I was just listening to them the other day. Uh, it's not NWA. Is it? No. Fight the Power? They have a new song that they just released. And apparently Flavor Flav, back in the band. Anyway, everybody, uh, any questions before I call this? And then I'll post it up on YouTube. Anything? I have a question about the extra credit points for like our last exam. Yep. Are those like already incorporated into our test score or is there, or are they separate? Are they in a separate column right now? I think so. I was looking at that. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. 
if because it's out of zero. So if it's four out of zero, that's four bonus points for you. So I would say that they're not, but let me ask Lawrence to clarify. Public enemy, that's it, that's it. Uh, yeah. I asked him about it and he said that it wasn't, it's not directly in your test grade, but it's in the test section. So if you look at your test total, it'll be your actual grade after the extra credit points. But if you look at just the test, it'll be your original score. So that should be how it looks on there. Okay. It says zero out of zero for like the extra credit still. So I didn't know if like, I don't know. It's just not there. Sure. sure. <laughs> well, give, uh, give Lawrence an email, send an email. Okay. Guy. He'll, he'll help you out. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yep. Zero, zero, an email to TA. Cool. Just make sure that, uh, that you get that. So everybody's taken care of. Um, any other questions? Although the, the averages were, were high, uh, and, and yeah, gave a few points back. I thought the test looked good for round one. Solutions essay grade. Yes. All right. So here's your ETA. Here's your definitive ETA. All right. We were, instead of a week, we're taking two. So we're taking till next Friday but that is still at least 10 days out of the other assignment, okay? Before the other assignment is due, it'll be all like, so next Friday is, I don't know, October 3rd or whatever it might be. But I, I'm, I'm not too sure that people are writing these essays like 20 days out. So this time you'll have 10 or 11 days out on it. So next Friday you'll have those. So don't worry about those yet. But you know, we had a meeting today um, just going over them, making sure you have in-text citations. A lot of people had, in-text citations and then didn't have references, forgot the references at the very end or the work cited or just that list, you know? So here's how we're dealing with that. Um, you know, you can lose points this first time around, but we're not trying to be brutal with people. So we're reminding folks, you'll be able to see the rubric and then that way you get on track. And then after this, if you leave your citations out after this, if you, you know, if you don't do that, or if you haven't had a specific enough of a solution. So yeah, you can look at the next solution assignment and I think you can type it out now uh, without getting your feedback. But again, we're so far out on that. Let's just um, give them till next Friday because they've got a lot to do that. Lawrence's email should be in the syllabus. Um, and I think that is there. Uh, so check it under announcements and check it under the syllabus file. Yep. Awesome. Take care, everybody. Be good people and do good things. This is it. We're a third of the way through the semester. And yeah, I think I'm happy in this class that we're just going to, I think I'm going to just start lecturing straight up uh, to everybody live. That'll, that'll be better for me and you. All right. Take care, everybody. Peace. Be well. Uh, Dr. Downing. Uh, yeah. I had a quick question for you. So um, like the top back questions, um, there are like some of them where like, for example, like, like the, one of the questions was like, what do you waste that we went over today? that um, it doesn't allow me to like comment on it. All right, let me go back in there and make sure that it's set up for a word answer. Okay. Uh, and then if you've gotten the other ones of today though, if you didn't get that, um, I, well, I, saw, I saw a lot of other people though had answers for that. Let me go check. In okay. case you can't particularly fill it out, don't stress about it. Okay, because there were a couple of them like these past couple weeks and I sent you an email Right. back or you know but i so like it's just kind of been like a thing where like i can answer like for example like if you post like six of them i can answer maybe like four of them but have i don't you know reached, have you reached out to jonathan at top hat no no is that is that in your it is uh, um if, if it's not in the syllabus send me an email and i'll forward it to you awesome okay he's thank you so guy. much he'll help us with every any anytime anybody needs anything in regards to that he's he's the dude and i may have made an announcement about it if i didn't though just send me an email Check announcements cool. first, though. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Right. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye.